Hello everybody, my name is Annika Sirkin and um, I want to change the point of view now completely because up until now we have seen um, towns or um, urban places only from either the inside or from the bird perspective and we were talking about um, yeah, like the development uh, uh, of the town itself or like the process of the urbanization. But I want to go um, outside of that now and I want to see the village like from the, uh, the town like from the village perspective. So let's see if this works. Yeah, I want to introduce myself. I work in Schleswig in the northern part of Germany and I uh, belong to the project Continuity of Research and Research of Continuity, Basic Research and Settlement Archaeology of the Iron Age in the Baltic region. This project uh, uh, has the, so short to say, has the aim to restore the lost knowledge about Prussian archaeology um, up until the Second World War. Um, my uh, sub-project is a little bit uh, different from that, but I will introduce you now to um, the subject project. It is a PhD project and it's still ongoing, so I will not present about some uh, um, results that are some final results, it's more like interim results. So, before I come to the settlement, I would like to start um, with the graveyard. Um, the um, area I'm talking about is the Sambian Peninsula and it's situated, situated on the um, southeastern coast of the Baltic Sea. And um, it is uh, nowadays Russian territory, so the uh, place has two names in the literature. The German name uh, from East Prussian time is Wiskiauten and the actual name is Mochovoye. And um, the graveyard itself has the old um, name Kaup. Mention cup. So um, the coastline of the Sambian Peninsula is uh, probably the uh, world's largest amber deposit. So this will become important later. The graveyard is the um, forest that you can see in the red circle, and it was um, found um, more than 150 years ago. And it was clear very fast that this is an exceptional graveyard. Because we have many burial mounds, like about 500 of them, and um, they're unusual in this landscape at all. We have here um, a Prussian culture, and they don't bury in burial mounds. So um, this was already something unusual, but we have also uh, flat graves, a few hundred of them in between these burial mounds. And we also have um, a mixed uh, ritual between inhumation graves and cremation graves. So something uh, quite exceptional for the region. Mm, very fast it became clear that um, there is um, also a great number of um, uh, grave goods that are also strange for the Prussian culture. And it was found that they have a Scandinavian character. So um, some of them have analogies on the island of Gotland and uh, the middle Sweden part. Um, I will not go into the detail of all the research of his, um, uh, that was made on the graveyard. I just want to mention that some of the finds were stored in the Königsberg castle, which um, was destroyed in the Second World War. And um, up until that point, um, there was no real settlement found, although it was always um, talked about that there should have been a settlement belonging to this graveyard, of course. Um, and also, when there have been buried so many Scandinavians, probably, um, they should have lived somewhere. And um, in the German time, up until the Second World War, there was often used um, terms like a colony or very military terms because they found so many men, like uh, um, the ratio between uh, men and women was uh, two to one, and uh, they also found so many weapons, so they were talking about warriors and, and so on. Up, um, today, we're not using all these military terms anymore. We're more talking about traders that were armed, 
And um, we also um, still have many terms in the literature when we talk about the ski out and like early town or port of trade. And another detail that I also want to mention, just by the way, is that we have a huge number of hill forts in that region. Um, in all East Prussia, we have a lot of um, hill forts, but there's a big concentration on the Zambian Peninsula, insula, like um, for every other archaeological item or monument as well. It all is very concentrated and dense on, on this um, uh, Zambian Peninsula. In the early 2000s, from 2005 until 2011, um, there was a new research done uh, by Timo Ibsen, who is also present today, hello. <laughs> and um, he was searching for um, the settlement. So he was not the first one who was uh, doing this, but um, there was very scarce uh, hints to a settlement that might have been found. So he took a sketch that he found in the archive by Max Ebert, where he uh, said that he, should, he found the settlement in the south of, um, the, of the graveyard. So what uh, Tim Ibsen was doing, he first of all made a huge geophysical survey Sadly, it was not possible in the south of the graveyard. You can see the graveyard in green on that um, um, slide, mm, because there are modern structures. But um, all around the um, uh, graveyard, he could uh, access the territory, and the um, geoph geophysical survey uh, gave an overview where might be some um, um, structures um, or some um, places uh, possible for settlement, but the picture is also not easy to read because there's a lot of modern uh, waste, uh, like iron objects, for example, and uh, um, they disturb the, the, the um, geomagnetical picture heavily. And also they're in the, in the deeper ground, there's uh, like stones and they also give some anomalies. So um, there were also done some drillings for the reconstruction of the um, coastline or the wetlands at least. So um, uh, a great, um, a great part um, in the east of the graveyard might have uh, been uh, a coastline in, in the uh, Viking Age. Um, and for um, that might have been a good accent, access to the um, Kuranian Lagoon, which is also accessible from the uh, Baltic Sea, and this might have been a good uh, landing site. So then there have been then the huge um, excavations, and um, there was kind of um, many <coughs> spots where they have been uh, settlements, and it, um, most of them have been in the north and in the east of this graveyard. This is a picture um, by Timo Ibsen, and this represents the different phases of the settlement. So, um, first picture is um, mostly about the, uh, the settlements uh, or traces of settlements in the Neolithic time. So, we also have one very huge mound, uh, burial mound, in the uh, graveyard from the Neolithic time. So, this corresponds. Then in the second picture, we see some uh, traces of the Bronze Age, mostly until um, the, uh, um, um, up until the uh, migration period. And um, the <coughs> most dense activity was, has been seen in the same time as the usage of the graveyard, so from the uh, 9th till the 11th century and further. Um, the picture of the archaeological um, objects is not so easy to read because there was a heavy um, a plowing situation already in, uh, um, uh, in, up until the German time, but also in the um, Soviet time there has been uh, really deep uh, plowing activities and also the German drainage system was destroyed. So uh, we have a lot of items in, in, in the plowing horizon and um, maybe we have only some deeper going um, archaeological objects like pits. Um, but we have beautiful wells and uh, good visible fireplaces. The house structures are um, quite small. 
So um, we talk about small houses that are not in a dense structure, and um, we cannot say that there was some some um, <coughs> town-like uh, situation or or like um, uh, yeah organized uh, um, um, town structure. But we have an interesting um, amount of, of uh, findings. We have more than 300,000 um, objects, and uh, they can be dated mostly um, uh, between the 7th and the 13th century. And uh, we also have some clear parallelities to the graveyard cow. For example, just, just a few examples. Um, the black and white pictures are pictures of uh, findings from the graveyard, and the um, colorful um, pictures are from the settlement. I will not go into detail. I just want to mention this uh, sword pommel, which is showing not only military aspects, but also uh, a statue symbol, because there is um, silver inlay. Um, we have an interesting shift in the animal bones from um, uh, using more like pork and um, goat by the Prussian culture, um, going into more usage of cattle later on. And we have uh, fish bones that indicates fishing in the uh, Baltic Sea, Corania Lagoon, and in the freshwater lakes around. But uh, we have interesting findings when we talk about trade. So we have um, a number of weights or items that are secondarily used as weights, like the endings of horseshoe fibulas. We have Byzantinic coins, we have um, Arabian <coughs> dirham that uh, this one is cut. So um, we clearly um, talk about the region of silver economy, not of coin economy. So um, there is a deep impact um, from, from uh, um, distance re relations, uh, trade relations. Mm, as I mentioned, we are in a region where is a great number of um, natural amber, so we also find um, the uh, semi-final uh, uh, produced amber beads, or final produced amber beads, um, but we also have like in other um, um, uh, imports, like um, carniol or jetstone or glass beads, just to mention a few of them. We have production of uh, uh, iron, um, uh, metal production, uh, like these crucibles. We have a molding form. This is an interesting um, exemplar because this is made of bronze, so um, it's not uh, possible to cast bronze in a bronze molding form. So you would use that for uh, tin or for creating a, a wax model for further going uh, to, to process uh, uh, to, to make lost wax, uh, lost forms with this wax model. Um, there are examples of uh, items that could be uh, produced by this. All right, I will hurry up. Uh, <laughs> there's examples that could be ex uh, produced by this uh, molding form with, uh, from coming from Birka, Kiev, or, or all around, but we don't have uh, one fitting from the Piskiotin itself. Uh, we have uh, also um, um, preservation of organic material, and here is an example uh, analogy from Novgorod, like this birch bark box. I, I won't go into detail now. So what we have is um, in the this graveyard is is not standing alone uh, in in this uh, vicinity. So there mm -hmm. is a, a huge amount of another graveyards all around from the Prussian time and earlier time. So uh, it's clear that the um, Scandinavian settlers that arrived were not coming into into empty space. They came into a functioning Prussian culture already, and they just integrated. So we have um, a, a network of small settlements working um, uh, parallel to each other, having connection to each other, and um, we have indications by these um, items of trade that there should have been uh, a large-scale trading activity, but we don't have this um, marketplace yet, and this is strange. So there is new findings from all around um, the area. So this is not a single case. There is a huge, <coughs> huge trade happening in all the um, Zambian Peninsula, 
but we just didn't catch the um, trading port. So just to sum up very fast, um, we have this exceptional graveyard, we have a network of small structures set of settlements, uh, we have a very good strategical place situation for such a trading place, uh, we have all the necessary imports and exports for having such a trading place. We have amber as a resource that could be traded, but we don't have any written sources. We don't have a fortification like rampart. We don't have a dense town like structure. We don't have a marketplace or black earth or a landing site. And my question is now, uh, this will, will go on in my research, like can we um, can we just catch this uh, trading point from from an outer view, from an outer perspective? Like can we uh, distinguish? Is it an early town or urban place or a port of trade? What I what exactly is it? And if you have some ideas, uh, some uh, indicators of the existence of such a place, or if you just would like to share your thoughts with you, uh, um, you're very welcome to contact me. Thank you. Thank you.